Namaskar. Uh, this is Vinay Patnaik. Uh, I worked as a chief consultant to the uh, Department of School Education, Ministry of HRD, Government of India uh, for nearly a decade to improve uh, quality of education under uh, Sarva Sikhya uh, teacher education and uh, also uh, a part of uh, multilingual education. And uh, in 2009, I joined uh, UNICEF uh, initially at Delhi office and then I shifted to Jharkhand uh, to work in a very multilingual setup. And in the last seven to eight years, uh, whatever I've tried to practice in the field, I would like to, uh, to discuss a bit of that. And if we look at today's uh, India, uh, we are very lucky that uh, we have a very uh, child-friendly and learning-friendly curricular framework, which is the National Curricular Framework 2005, uh, which was designed in a very collaborative way with the best of minds in the country for improving the quality of education for children. And after that, uh, we had uh, the Right to Education Act, which we call Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education uh, 2009 Act, which also gives us a scope to focus on learning in a child-friendly and child-centered manner. And in that it says that uh, children's initial education should be in the mother tongue of children to the extent possible. So this gives us a good space to think about quality education in every part of India uh, using uh, the mother languages of children to the extent possible. So in 2011, uh, when I uh, started working in Jharkhand as a full-time UN staff, uh, as education specialist there, uh, I discovered one thing that uh, children in Jharkhand used to drop out the maximum in the early grades, that is class 1st and 2nd. And that was a bit startling because it was the highest dropout in the whole nation. And then I thought because Jharkhand is a multilingual land with full of diversity, I felt multilingualism may be a factor contributing to children's lack of understanding in the classroom. So to prove this assumption or to find why uh, it's, it's happening, uh, we plan to set up a research cell on children's languages and we named it as uh, MTOL or Mother Tongue. The full form is uh, Mother Tongue Based Active Language Learning and we call it Akra because Akra is a, a local term uh, where children and people get together for cultural uh, activities. So that way the MTOL Accra uh, became a prominent center to, to do research and innovations in children's languages. And in this MTOL Accra, uh, we try to bring in the best of people who are concerned with children's learning and languages. So we got all the uh, senior professors and uh, readers from the universities of the state as the uh, key persons in this process. So we had uh, language workers, language professors in more than 15 languages and that included the tribal and regional language uh, department of Ranchi University also. So in the MTOL Akra, we had the professors from all the universities and other than them, we had the language workers and cultural workers from all the language communities of the state we had representatives from the government departments who are concerned with children's uh, learning and development. And also we had the NGOs and uh, we had people uh, who are known as good linguists or language workers in the state. So we started uh, discussing about children's languages and the possibilities and uh, we had a series of consultations. In that, our professors and senior people, they recommended that why not we start with a sociolinguistic study uh, which can give us an idea about the nature of language used in the different districts of the state and the experience of children in the classrooms. And all of us agreed to uh, go for the sociolinguistic survey. Those days we didn't have any tools to do that, so we had to work together to uh, look at the uh, sociolinguistic uh, profile of the state. So in this we try to look at the type of languages used in different states and different districts I mean and the experience of children 
inside the classroom how do they understand the teacher because uh, very interestingly although it is a very multilingual state uh, the whole uh, state used Hindi books uh, purchased from NCERT. NCERT books are very good in quality and they definitely aim to facilitate effective learning but books developed at Delhi uh, they couldn't do justice to children in Jharkhand. Their context was different, their experiences were different that's why uh, we had a feeling that children should get contextual books also. So we went for the sociolinguistic survey uh, under the leadership of all the professors and in that uh, we found that the investigators who go to the field must know children's languages. So that way from each university we identified research scholars and lecturers and professors who can go to the field and interact with children and uh, teachers Anganwadi Sevika and the community leaders. So that way uh, we identified about 150 research scholars uh, who were associated with the tool development and also they were oriented regarding how to go about data collection. So they went to all the districts. So in every district we have uh, 24 districts in the state and out of those uh, 22 are affected by left-wing extremism. But in that situation also, our 150 researchers, they went to the field and collected data. They went to all the 24 districts and in each district, uh, they went to three blocks. And in each block, they went to five villages. And that way, it was a very rigorous discussion with all the concerned people who were associated with children's languages. And they had the 150 researchers who knew children's languages they went to the villages to interact with uh, the teachers, uh, the Anganwadi Sevikas, the community leaders and uh, they had individual discussions and also focus group discussions. And in this process they could interact with a wide variety of people across the state and they collected data. And when we analyzed the data, we found some uh, data, some information that was eye-opening. You will not believe that the survey showed us that more than 96% children, they don't speak in Hindi. And they spoke mostly in their tribal and regional languages, at home, in the playground, and in the market. And we also discovered that in the playground and the market, they live in a very multilingual setup. Sometimes it is their own mother tongue, sometimes it is more than two languages they knew and Hindi was very, very less used. So that way, this was an eye-opening uh, experience for us. Also, we could look at the experience of children in the classroom and those things happened. And we came up with a uh, small document called Language Diversity in Jharkhand. And we shared that findings uh, with the most uh, people in the state at the level of politicians, uh, administrators, who make uh, policy and manage education and also we circulated it among the NGOs, judiciary, universities and civil society, uh, especially the communities who were associated in this language documentation process. And in this it clearly indicated that children in the early years, they don't understand their teacher and also the textbook and the pedagogical processes because it is Hindi all the way. In the language maps we saw, the first language of children, the way it came up uh, in the maps, it looked highly colorful, highly diverse. It looked beautiful, uh, colorful, multi-colorful uh, um, picture of the state, highly multilingual and diverse. Even the second language also, it didn't have Hindi. It was again tribal and regional languages. And Hindi was very feebly uh, visible in the language maps. But when we looked at the language pattern in the classroom, it was Hindi all the way. And children very clearly indicated that they did not understand the text and the teacher. So we asked them, how do you understand in the classroom? How do you manage in the classroom? They said, either we look at the picture to make out meaning out of that, or we discuss with each other if there is any space to discuss. Otherwise, we keep mum all the time. And you can understand how tough it is for children to keep mom in an alien world where they don't understand anything. 
So consequently, we saw at least three to four children out of the 10 children who entered school in class one level, they dropped out of the school. And that paid become the highest dropout in the state. And the state carried on printing the books in Hindi uh, for years without bothering what was happening to children, their learning and their development. So this one, when we shared at different levels, the NGOs, the universities, the community members, they all responded very positively. They were very curious yeah. and they started discussing that we must do something in children's languages. But the department didn't show uh, much of eagerness in that because they felt it's a big burden. As in India, in most of the states, people feel that multilingualism is a burden. They never realize that uh, if we don't use it as a resource or as a tool, how much we lose out in the classroom. Uh, so that way, uh, our bureaucrats and our political leaders also, they did not cooperate in the, in the initial days. But slowly, in every meeting in the state, in every conference, in any, every seminar, in every workshop, people started discussing about this survey finding and they started saying that why not in children's languages and the community members also started demanding before the government why not in our language and I feel that is a great uh, impact this study had on the system and slowly uh, after some time uh, one minister took interest in this and uh, they wanted to discuss about the findings. So when we shared the findings with them, uh, they made two significant changes. One is they decided that then onwards, when primary level teachers are recruited, it is a condition that they must know the child's language. Whatever they're going to teach, they must know the language of the children. And second thing, they also decided that we must do something for children in their mother tongues. So that with, the, that with these two decisions of the government, it started uh, germinating. And after this, uh, there was a time when we uh, saw a new government. Uh, for the first time, uh, uh, a non-tribal uh, leadership came in the state. Till now, it was tribal leadership. I was very hopeful that tribal leadership will definitely take more interest in this and they will initiate a mother tongue based approach. Uh, but uh, although they said yes, but nothing had happened. But in the new regime, uh, because of different political reasons, they agreed to initiate a mother tongue based multilingual education program. And that was the best opportunity for them to all Akhra to bring in the best of ideas and resources. By that time, we had collected a wide range of stories, songs, toys, games, riddles, idioms, jokes and many other learning resources from each community in more than 15 languages. And in this process, what we did, we developed uh, bilingual picture dictionaries for children. Our researchers again went to the field and they looked at the world of children and what sort of activities they take interest in and they engage in. And using their experiences, they collected a wide range of learning resources from the communities. And we organized those resources in different languages in uh, 48 themes. Using the collected uh, resources, we categorized all those things into 48 themes. And these 48 themes included uh, who are there in my family, uh, what are the things used inside my house, what things are used outside my house, what sort of food we eat, what sort of plants and animals we uh, work with, what sort of games we play and who are our community leaders, those things. So under these 48 themes, we identified the key words and key events and we got the best of illustrators to work with the uh, language workers and language communities and children to design those pictures yeah. very accurately. And using this, we designed bilingual picture dictionaries in nine tribal and regional languages. Uh, the name was Meri Bhasha Me Meri Dunia, My World in My Language. And it was multicolored and very well uh, prepared and printed. And we supplied this uh, to the Anganwadi centers and primary schools in all the 24 districts, uh, but in a limited way. It was not across the board. But one thing we discovered, 
the response of the children and community members was very inspiring because children and community members for the first time saw the things that they used to discuss uh, in black and white and color on paper. Till now they were telling it, they were hearing it. But now they could see it on paper in a printed manner. And that gave them a lot of hope and happiness. Children discussed about each picture at length. They would sit around the picture dictionary and they will discuss about each element by sharing each other's experience. The best thing was because in many places it was multilingual setup. So if, the, if there is a picture of house from different communities, they look different. So they started comparing and they started telling, oh, my house looks like this, but their house is like that. So that discussion, that comparison, that analysis, these things was shared in a brilliant way and that became a good pedagogic tool enabling children to learn very effectively and listening to each other. So that way we saw that in a multilingual setup, children take more interest in each other's things and they start discussing in a very multilingual manner also. And that we had discussed and discovered in the survey also, we saw children interacting with each other and with the seniors in different languages. Uh, so that multilingual practice, that conversation, that uh, culture, uh, we saw it's not alien to the community. They do it, they live in it, but school restricts it. So we wanted a change in the schooling process. So when we found good response to the uh, bilingual picture dictionaries uh, that you can see online also, and after that we planned why not we organize the content in a systematic manner and initiate the preschool education for the state. And we knew that unless children's school readiness is enriched in the initial days, children don't have the uh, happiness and interest to get into schools. So what we did, we worked on a total package called Bhasha Pulia. Bhasha Pulia means, Pulia is a local word for bridge, so language bridge. Our intention was to initiate a lot of child-friendly activities in the Anganwadi centers uh, using children's uh, interesting activities and then enable children to discuss about their experience in each activity. So for this, we have collected a lot of learning resources in the form of stories, songs, paintings, riddles, games, toys and many other things. We used each of these elements as a part of our Bhasha Pulia. In the Bhasha Pulia, we had 12 activity booklets, a learning ladder to indicate how to move systematically and a assessment chart to indicate whether children are moving in the right track or not. So that way, we uh, piloted the Bhasha Pulia package uh, in about 103 Anganwadi centers and we found that 80% children starting in their mother tongues, interacting in their mother tongues and consistently discussing about each activity, they acquired school readiness in a brilliant manner. More than 80% children, uh, they wanted to go to school with a lot of happiness and interest. So the government also felt very happy about that and now the program is being run in 1200 centers of six districts. The Bhasha Pulia, Pulia program is going on. And then we felt, uh, we kept on discussing with the education department, why not start primary education in mother tongue as a continuity to this. And very luckily, uh, our governor, uh, Mrs. Uh, Drupadi Murmu, and our new chief minister, they all showed active interest in this. And they said, yes, let us start a mother tongue based multilingual education program in first in tribal languages and then we will consider. So MTAL Akra has been consistently working in this area and by that time it was uh, uh, decided that we will start in tribal languages. We had developed textbooks in 16 languages for class 1st and 2nd. Using the NCERT's guidelines for textbook development, using the guiding principles of the national curricular framework which says that you need to go beyond the school, relate to the community and facilitate child-friendly activities so that children learn effectively language, mathematics, science, social studies and other things. So that was a great enabling tool for us. And using the guidelines, we use the uh, textbooks for class, uh, for class first and second. And uh, in this, we had all the tribal languages 
Plus, we also uh, develop the textbooks in three uh, languages which are very endangered and they are in the uh, situation of extinction. We also developed textbooks in the languages of the PVTGs, particularly uh, vulnerable tribal groups. Uh, there are nine tribal groups like that who are in the verge of uh, endangerment and they are also facing a lot of uh, existential challenges. So, uh, in Sabar, Malto and Birgia, which are very challenged languages, in those also we develop the textbooks. So, by that time government decided to go for the uh, MLE program in uh, seven languages, we had already prepared those. And we uh, immediately showed the text to everybody, it was reviewed, it was discussed and everybody felt happy because these are very culturally sensitive textbooks containing a lot of resources from the community so that children feel at ease and slowly they start learning in a, in a organic and comfortable manner. But other than the cultural things, we try to give them the flavor of outside world also. So that way, in these textbooks, suppose in language, uh, I would like to tell a bit about the language classroom because in a multilingual setup or in any other class setup also, generally in the Indian uh, language pedagogical processes, children are not allowed to interact. Although our national curricular framework emphasizes on that, that children learn language well if there is a print rich environment with interesting texts which are appropriate to the age of the child and also children get ample scope to interact. So the child interacts with the interesting text, with the peers, with teacher, with community members and in the process she acquires a lot of language learning skills. So those principles we try to bring in into this thing and when we call it interesting text we brought in a wide range we uh, dream we started dreaming that in our language classroom what will be the outcome we felt we can create storytellers we can create singers we can create dancers we can create riddle makers we can even once they learn how to read and write they can become writers they can become poets they can become uh, riddle makers, they can be magicians, they can be comedians and latter stage these skills can be applied to become uh, very creative designers of language in the coming days. So in our class first and second we wanted to nurture those things. So we brought in the best of stories for children, songs for children, dances, paintings, riddles, features, acting, even skits we brought into our pedagogical processes to give children wide experience of language because language is expressed through this media in a brilliant manner but our language classes don't teach us so that's why our language class aim to give very rich literary and language experiences to children in all possible means and how can we do that our teachers alone do not have all the skills and the experiences to do that so what we did, we tried to engage the community people. There is no community in Jharkhand or in any other place where they don't know storytelling. Every community has storytellers, singers, dancers, musicians, riddle makers, comedians, uh, magicians and all other things. That's why we try to create a textbook which can accommodate all this, where teacher and community members can plan together and they work with children to enable them engage with wide range of language activities. Similarly, our mathematics book also carried a lot of cultural elements in terms of uh, this rangoli or the designs they make on the floor or on the walls. Uh, similarly, there are a lot of items that they use in the kitchen or in the market or in the field. So bringing in the patterns, designs and the processes of mathematical thinking uh, we designed the textbooks in a very different manner. So each of our uh, subject uh, or I would say chapters started with a story or a song or a puzzle or a riddle and then we slowly introduced the concept of uh, shapes, sizes, addition, subtraction and this thing. So that way our teachers also felt very happy when saw the, they saw the textbooks. Then we got this uh, Textbooks in Santhali, Mundari, Ho, Kuduk and Khadiya. These are the prominent 
five tribal languages uh, which are used in the state and uh, we developed textbooks in these um, languages and these books were approved by NCRT. R.I. Bhubaneswar reviewed these books, approved these and then the government printed these books. So books printed uh, for children, uh, they were supplied to those schools. The, the state identified about a thousand schools in 10 districts where these are mostly monolingual setups where more than 90% children speak either in Santhali or Mundari or Go or Kuduk or Khadiya. And in these setups, uh, uh, we have prepared the school uh, to use the books also effectively. So through training programs for uh, the teachers and the community members, we have created a very enabling environment in the schools, not only physical environment, but also the learning environment. We are trying uh, that each school develops uh, community resource groups in about 16 to 18 domains. It includes a group of storytellers, group of singers, group of dancers, group of painters, group of uh, designers, group of uh, comedians, group of players who can play with children, group of uh, uh, people who help in children's nutrition, sanitation, protection and uh, also uh, health. So that way these groups uh, they have designed their own academic plan. We are in the initial stage but we are trying to promote this. Each school develops its own academic plan accommodating all these groups who will come when and how they will work with children as per the space given in the book. So that way they are expected to come to school and work with children uh, conducting those activities if it is a uh, singing then they come with the music, um, the musical instruments and uh, in a team they start singing. Initially children enjoy these things and once they enjoy they also start practicing and they start acquiring skills and applying those. In this process they also grow as little professionals, as singers, as dancers, as storytellers, as uh, comedians, as uh, many other creative personalities. So that way uh, the same thing is happening in mathematics also. When they interact with people who use mathematics, they feel, oh, mathematics is not confined just to our books, but it is a way to live and to do interesting things. So they start joining hands with the community members to apply mathematics. Suppose how tall, how long is this field? How uh, deep is the uh, pond. So these things when community members do it effectively then children start taking interest to think oh if it is done it can be done like this then why not like that. So those thinking that mathematizes the thinking process and they start enjoying discovering patterns applying the mathematical operational uh, processes that way they enjoy mathematics. So in this process I would like to add one more thing. There are few schools where there is a multilingual setup also. So in this context uh, initially we had a lot of challenges because our teachers knew the local language but still they were never given the opportunity to interact in their local language. They were never uh, encouraged to encourage children to speak in their language. It was Hindi all the way. It was a very dominating language in the classrooms that uh, failed children miserably. But now we have trained teachers to do few things which are very essential for a multilingual and a language classroom. First thing is every language is beautiful and every language has its own way of expressing through its structural ways, through its grammar. So if you listen to a language, you can discover those and you can discover the beauty of those cultures because they have stories, songs and lots of experiential practices which actually comes out in the through language. Suppose Bangla will not be there tomorrow uh, in the society. How shocking it will be because I know Bangla which has a wide range of language resources, the beautiful stories, the beautiful dramas, the beautiful literary activists, the beautiful songs. If somebody says the language will not be there, I cannot believe, I will feel that I have lost my life. That way. Similarly, if I look at another language with same respect, then I can discover, oh, that language also has beautiful stories. 
has beautiful experiences, has beautiful thoughts, has beautiful practices in the society. So the more I engage with that with a new language, I become more curious. I grow as a human being. I discover beautiful things about the language and I start loving that. So we are trying to create that love for different languages in the teachers. So how can they do that? The first thing is mentally you accept that as a language resource as a very enriching resource for my classroom. Second, be patient, listen to that. If a child is saying something in that language, listen to that. Try to see how the child is saying, what the child is saying, what is the experience behind that, what sort of new thing is there in that text. So the curiosity in the teacher is very essential. The more the teacher listens, the more the teacher appreciates. Wow. You have such a thing in your language. If the teacher discovers that and appreciates that, the child feels motivated. And once the child feels motivated, the happiness is contagious, it spreads. And also, other children, when they see that that child's language is appreciated, they also start appreciating that language. It becomes contagious. They also imbibe that spirit. And the more they appreciate each other, the more they listen to each other, the more they share their experience that becomes a rich classroom and that way many different language resources get shared. A small text in the form of a story uh, gives a lot of happiness, a lot of curiosity, a lot of interest, a lot of motivation and a lot of interest to learn more to each child in the classroom. And this thing most of our teachers they fail to realize. So in this process the teacher has been trained with a new approach. They have been told to uh, be acceptive uh, and that way to listen to children more, appreciate more and facilitate uh, and encourage children to come up with more of their text, ideas and experiences. And the other thing that we have tried to promote is a print rich environment. Other than textbook, we have the picture dictionaries which are there to facilitate a lot of discussion in the classroom. Also, we have designed a wide range of storybooks. For class first, in each language, we have more than 20 storybooks in their language. And that has been given with big letters and uh, small text so that they can try to look at the stories, the nature of text and they discover the alphabets and the words from that. So it's basically an exploration process in the class 1 level and in the class 2 level we have got series of another 20 books in language and mathematics which are to create interest among children to make them more enthusiastic about that but in class 2 the letters become smaller and the text slightly longer than the previous. So that way in a systematic way we have done that. Other than that we encourage the community members to bring in a lot of community resources. So in West Singhome where whole language is used, our teachers and community members have already developed eight uh, local museums, getting in a lot of uh, small models of the agricultural equipment and many other equipments from the village and uh, samples of clothes, samples of books and many other things from the community members. Those are very colorful museums in, uh, in the schools itself. So they visit the museum and discuss about each item. So other than the things they see in the community, they discover those in the books also and they see in the school also. So that way it has become a very enriching experience for discussing about different things and in different languages. Initially we are promoting uh, monolingualism in most of the schools because we want them to acquire the language skills in mother tongue initially and slowly using the uh, foundational skills they can relate to Hindi and then to English in a very systematic manner and right now it is still experiment, uh, experimental for us because we started the preschool education program uh, in about 1200 centers and now the uh, mother tongue based multilingual education program in about uh, a thousand schools in 10 districts so that way there is a continuity now now our aim is to develop books uh, for class third and fourth so that actually children passing out from these uh, class, classes, they continue their trend. But the, the higher classes they go into, we are reducing the text in the tribal and regional languages, slowly will increase Hindi. 
and graduate English also. So by the time it becomes class 4 or 5, they will be familiar with the uh, structures and sentences in Hindi and also a bit of English also. But the, as said in the theories and, and as practiced globally and demonstrated, uh, we can see those glimpses that when children are interacting more, when they are becoming more interested and confident, they start exploring more, they are taking more interest in other texts also and they are trying to become good readers, good um, mathematical thinkers and good science explorers. So that way slowly this thing is picking up and this is a good example of what we have uh, uh, advocated through the national curricular framework and in our series of workshops that uh, Professor Krishna Kumar, Professor Ramakant, Agnihotri and many people in the NCRT, uh, NIPA and uh, NCTs they have tried to promote and especially universities like the uh, Delhi University, uh, JNU and some of our prominent NGOs in the country they have advocated for this we have tried to demonstrate that in the field in a very challenging context because it was not initially easy but because of our interest and because of our teamwork, we have been able to uh, develop all these wide range of materials and we have started practicing in the classrooms. Now, one thing more I would like to say that in this process, uh, our languages in the communities are also getting enriched in the process because we are documenting a wide range of learning resources which are the best from each community. That way we can see that those language which were those uh, learning resources which are very vital and very useful gradually they would have died out because of the lack of use in the community. But now the community members see a hope that our stories are getting documented, our songs are getting documented, our games and toys also. So they are coming up with small small books our songs, our stories, our toys, our games like that. So in the, in the school level also a tendency is building up. Children are compiling those stories. Senior children in the school uh, from Bal Sansad and other groups, they are coming to these classrooms and whatever new stories are being told, they are writing it down. In the schools, two interesting things are happening. So the senior children are coming to these classrooms to document the stories, songs and other learning resources in the classroom. And in this way, what is happening, one set of documentation is going on of the community resources in the form of all these stories, songs, riddles and other things. At the same time, our little children, those who are participating in these activities, those who are listening to these activities, those who are enjoying these activities, slowly they have started telling their own stories, singing their own songs, practicing their own musical bits also. So that way, on one hand, the local language is getting enriched and revitalized through a proper documentation process. On the other hand, our children are composing their own language resources in the form of small, small stories, telling their own experience, own ideas in the form of stories. Also, they are composing small, small songs about uh, the cats, about their mother, about the stars and that way, so two different resources are coming up. One is Hamare Liye Kahaniya, that is a set of compil compilation and Hamari Kahaniya, that is a separate compilation. So that way, different types of things are emerging and what I see in this is, one hand, community is getting enriched by the documentation of its things, it's getting revitalized. Second, children are learning, they are taking interest, they are more confident, they are more creative now. They are applying their long skills to design new resources and that is a great achievement. In the traditional process, many children, those who complete BA, MA, they fail to write a story in their life, they fail to compose a song in their life or they fail to do something on their own. But in the primary level, now children have started experimenting in the multilingual classrooms. So today, if one song is composed about the cat in Santali, the other children when they see a song composed by children in Santali, they also start going in Mundari also and Kuduk also. And that's a great cultural practice. And these children, those who start doing in the early grades or in the primary level, they will never fail in life. 
because little successes of childhood ultimately contributes to the bigger successes in life and that is being proved in these classrooms. Those little songs composed today in class 3rd or class 2nd, I am sure that child will never forget or discontinue to write a song or a story in the coming days or one day the child may become a film director or a big publishing house. So that way there is a great potential and I for the first time feeling very enriched and happy that language classrooms they have tremendous potential. If it is properly planned, if it is properly facilitated then each of the children in the class can shine brilliantly as a language expert, not only just a lecturer or a reader or a professor, but can be a brilliant writer, a brilliant storyteller, a brilliant filmmaker or a brilliant uh, textbook developer and editor. There are great potential. Or the same child with a bit of interest in science can become a good science analyst, a good science researcher, can be a good science editor too. And in mathematics, one can be a good statistician, statistician or one can be a brilliant mathematical thinker and writer too. And the same applies to social scientists which has enormous potential. But the thing is, how do we design our primary classrooms and especially using the community resources, community cultural practices, community traditions and the skills, then we can definitely take it to a great height and India as a country can do much, much better than many other so-called brilliant countries. I have that conviction. Thank you so much.